morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are, whenever you're watching this. This is Floating in Dreams and today we're going to be doing a full face of K-Beauty first impressions. Welcome to everybody watching today's video. Thank you so very much for being here. Today I have a video for you with some of the new bits that I picked up from YesStyle that I showed you in my May monthly haul. And I thought I could come on here and do a true, true first impression, trying a lot of these products out for the first time. So if you would like to see my first experience using the Perito BB cream, then definitely stay tuned because that's one of the products we will be chatting about. And I've got safer like setting spray, mascara, and primer. I have a true, true full face here. From concealer and powder to eyeshadow and cheek products, bit of brows. Um, some of these products you may have seen in a full face of K-Beauty before, um, because the powder and the brow product aren't new to me. I didn't buy those recently. I already got those last year. Um, but yeah, that's everything that's going to happen in this video. And in case you're new here, you've never seen one of my videos. Hi, my name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands. I like coming on here to chat about eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice reviews, and getting the use out of my makeup. And that's also why I would like to come on here and do a full face of K-Beauty for you. Because in case you didn't know yet, I have a fair skin tone, as you might see, uh, with a cool to neutral undertone, making me a member of the Snow Angel Club. And I have just found that K-Beauty products are usually sheerer and easier to work with. And if you have fair skin, sometimes it can be very difficult to blend things out if they are too pigmented. And K-Beauty, J-Beauty, Asian Beauty brands tend to be more sheer. Um, so I have really found that for that natural dewy look that I like to go for in my day-to-day -day li life, I like trying these kind of products out. So. I'm well aware what these products can do for me, but I'm very curious to see because I haven't tried these products in particular, but in recent years, many of the K-Beauty products I've tried have become favorites. So that's why I thought we could just dive right in and do this full face off. So let me pull back my hair and let's get started. The first product I'm going to be using is my Catrice The Hydrator Plump and Fresh Primer. This is currently in my Shop My Stash still, um, but it's running very low and I'm sort of filming things out of order um, for the month of June. So I'm not sure by the time you're watching this video whether I'm still using this product because it's running very low. But if you've watched my Shop My Stash, you will know what other primer I have selected. So that may be the one that I'm truly, truly using currently, but this is just one that I'm trying to use up and it's a really nice one. So that's why I thought I could use it again today. For eyes, I'm going to be priming my lids with the Milani eyeshadow primer from my Shop My Stash. Um, this is just easy steps that I always do whenever I do any makeup look um, because the Milani eyeshadow primer is the only thing that will make eyeshadow stick to my lid. So now that we're primed and ready to go, it is time for the first product, which is going to be the Perito Sika Clearing BB Cream. I got this in the shade 21 Light Beige. That's the shade that I'm in the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream, and that's one of my favorite BB creams of all time. But so many people on my last K-Beauty video said, you need to try this, but it was always out of stock, so I couldn't really get my hands on it. And now that I was playing it on another Yes Style order, I was like, might as well try this. So that's why I've got this one in here for today. Um, this is what the shade looks like. It looks very gray, which is something, in case you're unfamiliar with K-Beauty products, is something that you need to take into account. Uh, very often they want to, um, like the makeup styles just a little bit differently and the needs that they're trying to cover are just different from what a lot of people in the Western makeup world are looking for. Um, but I'm hoping that with my cool undertone, I can make it work and of course I'm going to blend it out with a sponge. It doesn't have really like any scent or anything which I'm happy with. It feels very rich and creamy which I like. Does this have SPF? It doesn't say anything about like SPF or anything. And that is what the Perito BB Cream looks like on me. And I'm really liking it. As gray as it starts, 
it completely disappears when I blend it in. So I'm pretty sure that you do need to bear in mind that you can't go to full coverage with this because then it will leave perhaps a bit of a white cast. Um, but on my fair skin, that definitely disappears. And I love how glowy this looks. It looks really pretty on. So I'm very happy with this. I'm gonna have to put this in a shop my stash in the future to try it more though. Um, this is just a first impression, but that first impression, it's really, really good. For concealer, I'm gonna go in with the Clio Kill Cover Liquid Concealer. Uh, shade is 2BP. I don't know what shade that is from the top of my head anymore, but when I look up the English name of it, then I'll make sure to put it in the uh, description box down below. Um, I wanted to try more Clio products. I've heard that they are a really good K-beauty brand, and that was my aim with this new Yes Style order, is to try brands that I hadn't tried before. I've tried Holika Holika and Etude House, but Clio is a more like higher priced brand from that market that I was just incredibly interested in to see what they could do. So uh, today I'm just testing out the concealer to uh, dip my toe in. And I'm not going to use too much of this because I think it may be with Kill Cover, I'm expecting this to be pretty high coverage. So I've got some blemishes here and there. So let me just try and see what happens if I just cover those up. And use the remainder, like just lightly dot it here. I mean, if there's anything I've learned from using K-Beauty products in the past, is that with the base products, so things like concealer and foundation, it's very often like a little can go a long way kind of situation. So that's why I'm sort of doing it like this. Uh, I think I do want to go in with a brush just to spread it out a little bit before I start using my sponge. Just to give it a fair, sh a fair chance. Ooh, yeah, this is pretty full coverage. So that is also a very successful concealer indeed. As I have predicted with this one, a little goes a long way. It made, like, some of the blemishes I have, like, you can't even really see them anymore, which is great, because that's what I'm sort of looking for when it comes to a high coverage concealer. Um, because I'm wearing bangs, in my, because I've got bangs right now, more of a fringe, I've noticed, it, noticed that I have some more, like, blemishes on my forehead now that I ha wear my hair down a lot more and wear the fringe right right in my face. Um, so that that's a downside to having more hair in your face, I guess, but I'm liking the bangs a lot. So that's why I'm uh, very happy that I now have this concealer because then we can make sure that that is sort of out of the way. Um, for powder, I don't have a new product. This is the Etude House. Can I read this? The Secret Beam Powder Compact. Uh, and this is in the shade Light Pearl Beige. I'm not sure if they still do this. With Etude House, you just never know what they end up discontinuing, I find. But this is a very pretty sort of hourglass diffused light kind of powder. That's how I would categorize it. It looks like it's got actual sparkle when you look at it in the pan, but I feel it doesn't translate to the skin. I just find it a very pretty, very like good illuminating sort of finishing powder, which is what I like. And my plan is once I use up my Kiko powder for my shop, my stash, to start using this one up because I really liked it. For brows, I'm going to be using a brow pencil I also already own. This is from the Face Shop, and this is their Designing Eyebrow Pencil. Does this have a shade in gray brown? And it's just one of those like twist up pencils. These are my favorites. And I have tried. I think it was by Holika Holika or Etude House, the drawing eyebrow pencil, and that was really lovely too, but it lasted me such a long time that I got sick of using it, so I won't be repurchasing that anytime soon, um, because that I think that brow pencil lasted me like, I don't know, nine months or so, maybe a year? Like, it lasted me a lot longer than most brow pencils usually do. And this is perhaps a little ashier than what I normally would go for, but I think it goes really well with my complexion. So I'm, I can't wait to also use this more. Once I've used the Rubaro pencil that is currently in my shop, my stash, I'm thinking of rolling this one in. For brows, to finish it off, I'm going to be using the brow gel from my shop, my stash. This is the Clean ID Hydro Brow Fixing Gel 
from Catrice, and it's running very low, and it's gotten very thick and gloopy. So again, if you've seen my shot, my stash, you may have seen me swapping this out, but as I'm sitting down to film this bit, in this video, I haven't gotten around to filming my shop my stash yet because I want to leave it to the last minute, you could say. So again, if you'd like to be if you'd like to know what I'm actually currently using, um, because this one is just looking a little gross as well. Now we get to the exciting bit because I love trying out K Beauty cheek products. They usually are just really successful for me because they have the sheer formulas, they do a lot of cream products, which I'm currently really into. Something that you should know though is that in Asian beauty, bronzing isn't really a thing. So I've never tried anything that could potentially work as a bronzer on me, but then I found this from Peri Para, and this is their V Shading, Ink V Shading Photo Ready Powder in Almond Brown. And this looked like a really nice cool tone bronzer. You get the very light shade and then some deeper shades. And I thought that this could look very pretty indeed. I also like, even though the compact is very simple, that you sort of get the idea of a camera lens here, which I think is a cute detail. So let me see how this works if I use it as a bronzer. So that is an, a very successful bronzer indeed for my fair skin. I was afraid that because that middle shade looks to be quite cool toned, that this could look potentially a little bit gray on me and make it look very muddy. I've had that experience with some Asian products in the past, but this I think has the right amount of warmth that I need for my complexion to really make it work as a bronzer. So this may have been a product that is now out because more and more people from like the Western market are discovering K-Beauty and now these K-Beauty brands are starting to do these things as well. Who knows? But yeah, I'm very happy that I now have this very easy to use powder because if you are a snow angel like me, then you know that with cheek products, if they are too pigmented, it can look like too much very quickly. And I like that this is sheer enough that it can build it up. I mean, this will work for me in the winter time. If I build it up even more or dig my brush more so into one side of the pan, I can make it look darker. I think that this is going to be a great one indeed. I told you I wanted to try Clio and they do some stunning, at least they look like stunning highlighters. This is their Prism Highlighter in Fairy Pink 02. And I'm not sure the pro the camera probably doesn't show like pick this up at all, but it's like a champagne -y gold with like a pink flash. It's very pretty. Maybe if I swatch it, maybe it shows up then. It's a very soft like baked gelée kind of formula. It feels very luxurious. The compact is a little bit cheap, perhaps for how expensive this is. Um, but the powder inside is of course what it's about. You do get a little mirror here as well. I think it's a good one. Um, let me see what this looks like on my face. Wow, I think this is stunning on the cheeks. It does have a bit of like a golden peachy warmth to it in real life that I don't think the camera is picking up on. So, and then it has this brighter pink flash. It's like the more perfect version of Comet Catcher for me because it doesn't have much of a base at all and then you just get this shifty peach to pink kind of glow. I think this is very pretty and very unique indeed and because the texture is very thin you can build it up but it still doesn't lay on the skin or create the look of like a stripe or a cast. Wow, this is stunning. And then finally for cheeks, the, I'm hoping that I'm pronouncing this correctly, the I'm Uni uh, Cream Blush in Plum, which looks very dark, but this is why I love K-Beauty brands. If I swatch this, you'll see that it shears out into this really pretty, like deeper mauve tone almost, like it's very pretty. I'm going to be applying this with fingers. I believe these are called melting blushes. So to me, this very much reminds me of the formula you get in the Rare Beauty melting blush, where when you put your finger in, it feels a bit more solid at first, but then you can feel it melting as you're putting your finger in. Like you can feel 
the product becoming more emollient, but then it does dry to a more matte, powdery kind of finish, which I think will be very pretty. So let me put these on. And I'm now realizing I'm using my wrong fingers. <laughs> Going to put a little bit more on. In real life, I can see it already very well showing up, but for the camera, I think I need to apply a bit more. So again, I just always do this when I do cream blush because it gives me a lot more control, like rubbing your fingers together, really warming up that product, and just adding a little bit more here. Really making sure we hit those cheeks and then the sponge to blend it all in. Oh, very pretty. I think I bought the right shade for me because I really like this like pinky plummy mauviness that has a hint of red to it. This is great for the winter time. Like you can make this very sort of like just in from the cold kind of look. It looks very fresh, which I love. I'm quickly going to do my double prime action with my MAC Paint Pot and then I'll be back for the eye look. And for the eye look, I wanted to use as many products as I could, so I'm going to be using an eye palette as well as a sort of like cream shadow kind of thing. This is the uh, Rêve de Paris à Moonshot palette, which is by the brand Moonshot, I believe. And it's this really nice like pocket mini palette with this like rosy side and this warm tone side. And I think I'm going to go in with the rosy tones here. Um, because that will allow me to set up a look. I've got an inner corner highlight here as well. And then I can pop this Air Mousse from Etude House. Um, this is in Cherry Blossom Popcorn. It's a very pretty sort of like color pop super shock kind of thing where it's like a cream to powder that I can think I can just press over this and make it very pretty and iridescent. So I think I'm going to put this shade in the crease, this all over the lid, this on the lower lash line in the inner corner to blend things out and then this on top. That's going to be a quick and easy look for sure. So let me see how this goes. I'm not going to zoom you in because I think you can see well enough what I'm doing. It's not going to be a very intricate eye look at all. I just cleaned all of my brushes and now I can't find what they are because I usually like determine based on what they look like, what shadow I yes, last look <laughs> used with it to find which one it is, but oh well. Mac I can say about this eye look. This little Moonshot Rêve de Paris palette is incredibly stunning. I've only used five shades. They are a little bit more warm toned than what I would ideally love, but the way this came together, great pigmentation, great blendability. They are a little bit powdery. This shimmer shade, I popped it in the inner corner and it's really really pretty it's more like a rose gold though it looks very champagne in the pan but it has this really nice rose gold under uh, gold undertone these shades blend it easily they have great pigmentation they are a bit powdery though so you may want to make sure you tap your brush off um, because they could create fallout because of how powdery they are but I love that shade for the crease. These two are very similar though I didn't really see much of a difference between two, those two shades but it's, this is such a great travel palette, which is why I got it, um, because I was hoping that this could be like a fun palette to give a lot of options for when I'm traveling, but in this really nice, cute, compact kind of style, which is great. And then I felt the look truly came together when I popped this Etude House Cherry Blossom Popcorn shade on top. I first went in with a finger, uh, but it is more of like a powdery texture. 
So I layered another layer on top with a brush, which also worked really well. So this picks up well enough with a brush and it also transfers to the lid. And it's it, this great iridescent sparkle that's not glittery. I don't know how they do it, but what, you know, some brands in Western makeup would only create as a pressed glitter. I have found within Asian beauty to sometimes just be these really pretty, like a satin base with a lot of sparkle through to it that still sticks to your lid, that doesn't create fall down. Like how they do it, I don't know, but this, this is my kind of vibe when it comes to an eye look for every day. It's just, you know, wham, bam, slap it on and you're done. Super easy. It looks like you did a lot of effort and it took like, what, five minutes? <laughs> like it was really quick and easy. So I love that. And then I also wanted to try one of the Moonshot Rêve à Paris uh, lipsticks. This is shade zero, uh, 604 Urban Mauve. And since we're going full on mauve with this blush, and this eye look, I thought I could go for like a mono monochrome kind of moment and use this lipstick to see what it looks like on me. <sighs> this is very pretty. Now, I didn't do a very good job applying this, but I do really like this shade. This is a very nice, like, rosy mauve tone. It does have, again, a little bit more warmth than a typical mauve would have. It definitely has a bit of that like oranginess almost to it, but I feel that because my lips have a cooler undertone and against my skin tone, the warmth this has, especially in the bullet, is kind of toned down. I find it looks peachier on camera than it does in real life. In real life, it's like a warm, rosy tone, and I think it goes really well with the mauve tones in this eye look. So, um, yeah. Is there anything here I didn't like? I don't think so. I think every single product here was a success. So let me know in a comment down below what your favorite K-Beauty product is. I would love to know. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more by me. I will, of course, be putting some of these things in Shop My Stashes in the future and write dedicated reviews to these on blogs. And the eyeshadow palette is definitely going to make an appearance in like a 10 palette review video at some point as well. So these products are all going to make another appearance again here on the channel. So I hope you like to stay tuned for more and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.